Welcome to Community Talk. My name is Dimple Sandu Johnson. I'm the new Volunteer Services Coordinator at Leonardo's Children's Museum. And I'm here today with my colleague, Louis Eggleston, and we're going to talk about the different volunteer opportunities available for you at Leonardo's Children's Museum. Sure, we'd love to talk about that. But first, I think Enid wants to know a little bit about who Dimple Sandu Johnson is. So oh, if you okay. want to tell us where you're from and what brings you to Enid. Sure. Um, I'm from Vancouver, Canada originally. I've been here since October last year. And I'm here because my husband is part of the Air Force and he was here, so I had to move here to join him. <laughs> and I'm loving it. People are super friendly here and I'm very grateful there's an opportunity to work with the Leonardo's Children's Museum. So, yeah. I've been, I've been serving the not-for-profit sector for about 17 years as a fundraiser, um, both paid and as a volunteer and now I'm looking forward to using my skills here to expand the volunteer program at the museum. Yeah, so why a children's museum? I enjoy working with children. Um, I enjoy the fact that uh, your museum is going to be serving children and providing them educational opportunities um, for growth and learning, and it's a safe environment um, for them, so I appreciate your cause. Um, I've worked with a children's organization before, two of them. Um, one was working with children who had autism, and I served as a fundraiser for them. And another one was um, for children who had special needs, and I did work with them. And some of the most gratifying work that I did that I remember to date was the work that I did with the children who had special needs. Um, because it was amazing what they were doing for them, giving them the opportunities to engage with the community and feel quote unquote normal, mm -hmm. right? So I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, Leonardo's is just so lucky to have you and to bring your past experiences um, here to Enid and here to the museum. We're just really grateful to have you with us at Leonardo's. So we look forward to having you there. And um, as a new um, position at Leonardo's, um, we're, we have the volunteer services coordinator, mm -hmm. which um, will be really helpful to the museum and to everyone here in Enid because there are lots of children nowadays, um, high schoolers, who need hours um, to volunteer in the community so that um, it looks better on their college scholarships or um, if they want to volunteer in order to get a job maybe someday. Um, so there are lots of opportunities at Leonardo's. You want to tell us about a couple of them? I know there's opportunities at Leonardo's for one-time volunteer work. So if you're looking for, um, you know, special event work or to help with our painting of our castle, um, we have projects that come up annually. So if you don't have a lot of time, but you're like, hey, I have some, I do want to learn, get some volunteer hours or community service hours, um, there are opportunities to come in for that one time for four hours um, or maybe twice for eight hours. We also have a docent program, um, which is educational volunteers, and we require that people sign up for about a year year. Um, it's eight hours a month. The idea is that you help our participants, um, the children and the parents, um, navigate the exhibits. And you're welcome to use your creativity to put together a crafts workshop if you like. Um, it's an opportunity for you to you know, engage with our clients as well as use your own skills um, to, to give them something mm -hmm. um, if you want to do that. Yeah, so I'll elaborate a little bit on the docent program too since this is your first day <laughs> and you're already <laughs> exceeding everything. I don't know who would go on camera on their first day, but Dimple <laughs> is, so thank you for doing that. Um, <clears throat> but the docent program is a brand new program at Leonardo's that um, uh, at other museums, the docent program is, so if you're, for example, if it's an art museum, the docent would take uh, tours, uh, take the guests on a tour throughout the museum and explain the uh, portraits and the paintings and the style. Um, and at Leonardo's, and what you were saying, they would uh, help families through the exhibits, uh, explain uh, some of the uh, history and science or art uh, technique behind the exhibits. Um, and uh, just create uh, a better experience for these for these kids, and um, because it's a volunteer program, uh, there's more creativity to it. Mm -hmm. So um, you're not an employee of Leonardo's, um, but a as a volunteer, you're able to think of these creative, elaborate because you can take as much time as you want <laughs> if you're volunteering to. Um, to really engage the student with a, a hands-on arts and science project. So if you have um, eight hours a month, so that kind of boils down to two hours a week, if you have a few hours a week, two hours, say on a Wednesday morning from 10 to noon, 
um, to just spend some time at the museum, to play at the museum, uh, we'd love to have you. Um, what's great about the docent program is that it's a year-long commitment. And so the museum, um, while as much as we love our one-time volunte one volunteers who can uh, do an afternoon project. What the museum really needs is somebody who can spend some time every week that uh, the museum can rely on to just sit down and play and have fun uh, with the kids at Leonardo's. Well, that sounds fabulous. Yeah, so that's our brand new docent program. Um, and we also welcome corporate volunteers all the mm -hmm. time. So we all have um, <clears throat> Like uh, the Central National Bank Center Day, they came out uh, with Spectra events um, and spent some time refurbishing Adventure Quest. Uh, OG&E volunteers came out one day. Um, Safe Flight, um, their guys are always out helping us out. So if you have uh, a volunteer day set up uh, in your corporation, um, think of Leonardo's. We'd love to have you. There's lots of stuff to do out at Adventure Quest or in the museum too. We're always happy to have volunteers. Um, and why don't you tell us a little bit about event volunteers? Could you do that? Sure. About some of our fall events coming up. Some of our events coming up for in the fall are there's Motor Mania, which is on September 23rd. We have the Princess Ball on October 21st, and we also have the Fall Festival on October 20th. And we're looking for volunteers to help us with setup, to work through the events, with teardown. Um, some of them, some of the volunteer opportunities involve engaging with the clients and the participants at the at the events, and some of them involve in require you to do some heavy lifting. Is it heavy lifting? Like um, when you're doing setup? Not, I'm going to ask him because he's yeah. done more events yeah. than I have. I'm new. <laughs> yeah, so some of our school is starting yes. and our fall events are quickly coming up. So our first one, like you mentioned, is Motor mm -hmm. Mania on September 23rd. And that's where um, all the trucks that kids see every day rolling down Owen K. Garriott um, and you, they're just fascinated by those big cranes or something like that. They will be parked at Leonardo's in the parking lot that, that Saturday morning from 10 to noon, and we'll have cranes up, we'll have uh, police cars, hopefully the fire trucks. That sounds exciting. Uh, OG&E trucks. Yeah, um, I think last year we had a floral truck, um, so kids could see how flowers get to uh, their homes. Um, so gosh. do you want to explain in that event, how did you utilize volunteers? What were they required to do? Yeah, so everybody who brings the, uh, a truck, we call a volunteer, because mm. they are volunteering their time to show um, children these trucks and to educate um, children on these trucks. Because these are uh, the men and women who are driving these trucks every day um, here locally in Enid and are uh, opening up these trucks so kids can crawl around and safely and look at how these trucks operate. Mm. Um, and then we also have, uh, we, we had Pioneer Cellular come out too with some of their trucks and they also brought that Western Pioneer guy <laughs> and a mascot. Uh, so he's out there volunteering, um, making sure that the kids are having a, 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 a fun time while they're out there too. So um, kids are looking into engines, they're crawling around these vehicles, um, and the cranes even um, that morning will raise the flags up in the parking lot. So um, it's a great, great way to get to see these big trucks up close mm -hmm. in a kid-friendly environment. So you're looking for volunteers right now to volunteer their trucks? Yep, volunteer their trucks, and then uh, to help work the event. So um, we'll need to put wristbands on kids, um, people walking around just making sure uh, where all the trucks are, they can help guide, and Adventure Quest will be open, lunch will be served that day, and tickets can be bought online at leonardos.org. And since I'm new, do you want to give me a bit of information and everybody else about the Princess Ball and the Fall mm -hmm. Festival, um, what they're about, and how we're <clears throat> going to be using our volunteers? Yep. Um, so before those events, on the October 13th, we have an event called Friday the 13th, um, which is our nightlife at Leonardo's. And so uh, typically, well, uh, quarterly, I should say, we'll have a 21 and over night at the museum. Mm -hmm. And so there just happens to be a Friday the 13th in October. So we're going to um, um, capitalize on that and bring in a speaker who will do, um, the author uh, is Tammy Wilson, uh, uh, and she wrote the co-writer of the book, Ghost Lahoma. Mm -hmm. And so she knows some Enid ghost stories, and she's going to tell them that night at our lecture at 7 o'clock. Oh, wow. 
And so if, if you're 21 and over and you would like a cocktail walking around the museum and hear some ghost stories about Enid, that would be a Sounds great night spooky. to come to the museum, Friday the 13th. And then um, October 20th, as you mentioned, is our fall festival. Mm -hmm. And kids come to Adventure Quest dressed in their Halloween costumes. Mm. And then they're decorating pumpkins. And they're doing other fall-themed activities that morning. And that's also from 10 to noon. Well, that's um, lovely. So we need volunteers to help with the pumpkin craft project mm -hmm. um, to help serve lunch that day. Um, the kids are off from school at Eden Public School that day, that Thursday and Friday. So that Friday morning, come down for Fall Festival, October 20th. Because October 21st, that next day on Saturday, is our Princess Ball. And I know you haven't been to a Princess Ball yet, no. but this is one of our biggest activities. And it's uh, a very special night for dads and daughters. Mm. Um, and girls uh, dress up as their favorite princess. And their, their dad takes them to this royal ball. And they're announced to come into the ballroom um, as their princess name. And they walk down the red carpet. And then they see their favorite princesses dressed up to greet them. And it's just really adorable. Oh, wow. And it's a night full of just enthusiastic smiles. I mean, I can't describe anything like I was dressed up as Prince Hans last year. And there was a Anna and Elsa and Snow White and, gosh, every other Disney princess. Disney princess. Oh, yeah. Wow. And so it was just a, a, a fun night. And um, this year, we're going to have dinner served. Um, and there's going to be lots of singing and dancing. So get your tickets. Those are also online at Leonardo's.org. So is it just fathers and daughters, or can mothers come as well? No, no. They try to sneak in. Um, but this is just a special night for uh, dads and their daughters, a night to get away and a night to bond mm. so um, that the princesses can remember this special night where they were treated like a princess oh, um, from their dad. Yeah, it really is a special night. Uh, for the princesses and for the dads, because now all the dads, uh, the princesses last year were dancing with all the bigger princesses, and the dads were all on their phones, like trying to make sure you know that mom saw that their little little one was Aww. having a fun time. And then after that was taking place, then they would join in and start dancing. And so it really is a special, unique moment to see dads and their princesses. And how would we utilize our volunteers there? What would we need our volunteers to do? So if you have a princess outfit and you would like to volunteer, please come down. We, we need help um, setting up uh, all the centerpieces, anything else that day. So there are lots of volunteer opportunities at Leonardo's. And we will have all these uh, opportunities online at leonardos.org. Um, if folks want to figure out uh, how to find the docent information, there's a docent packet online with all the information about that. We have a volunteer application online at leonardos.org as well. So all of our volunteer opportunities are available online at leonardos.org. Yep. Okay. So, and with that, I want to thank you, Dimple, for being with us here uh, on Ena TV today, but also being with us at Leonardo's Children's Museum. We're really oh, I'm excited. I'm looking to forward have you on to board. it. Yay! So, if you have any more uh, questions uh, or would like to learn uh, more or need more information, please go to Leonardo's.org. So, thank you today for watching us today on Community Talk. I'm Carrie Sanders, the director at Loaves and Fishes of Northwest Oklahoma, a client choice food pantry where our mission is fighting hunger, feeding hope through healthy food choices. Watch for us on Community Talk. Welcome to Community Talk. My name is Demetrius Office, and, and we're excited about um, bring you in, into this this session uh, of community talk to talk about something that I'm very passionate about. Um, we are putting together an event called a cultural community celebration uh, and we are trying to bring in and rally in a lot of the community and in, into this actually event this function so that we can just explore the different possibilities here and so I got a special guest here Johnny Ray. Uh, Johnny Ray tell, tell the audience out here about yourself. Well I'm originally from Chicago and uh, I moved here at a very young age in Enid, and uh, my family background is very rooted from Enid. 
So I ended up graduating from here and moving back to Chicago. Okay. And that was around about 95, and I came back and opened up PJ's Family Affair, you know, okay. and I've been in business for about 20 years, you know. Me and my mom, we're both cosmetologists. Okay. And we love what we do, and, you know, Enos a, a great community to grow up in, okay. you know. So we, we share like uh, similarities in the sense that we not, we're not originally from Enid, but we've landed here in right. Enid, and we've experienced the culture in Enid, and we decided to stay, right? Right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we decided to stay, yeah. you know, and, 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 listen, and, and tap into our calling here, and, and we just, you know, we had many conversations before where mm. we really wanted to see uh, the growth of Enid, and so this is definitely one of those platforms where we can just kind of shout to the mountaintops right. and just uh, show, showcase to people what we are currently doing and mm -hmm. what we've come from and, and what we desire to see in our community uh, as we expand in our community from a cultural standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got a few questions here that, that I'm burning to ask uh, Johnny Ray here and, and, uh, and hopefully uh, as, as we get to know Johnny Ray and, and some of his, uh, his team here, uh, you can certainly reach out to them at a later date and, and just try to figure out exactly what is Baby um, and, and what is behind his newest organization, Baby. So, General, tell me about Baby. What is Baby? Well, Baby, it's a, it's a nonprofit organization, 501c3, and it's a mentor organization. Okay. You know, uh, going back to my, uh, my profession, which is in hairstyling, you know, I was offering free haircuts to kids, you know, back to school and that sort of thing. And okay. it just gave me a little drive on the giving back end. You yeah. know what I mean? So uh, me and my friend, we uh, came up with the uh, name Baby because we want more substance to the name. Okay. So it stands for Building a Better You. Wow. So uh, we, we, we implemented that to the activity that we were already doing as far as, you know, giving the free haircuts. Okay. So we wanted to do a little bit more besides the free haircut. We want that to be... Uh, attention getter so we can mentor to the kids mentor. you know mentor you know good morals and you know just telling them that they doing good in life and encouraging them and empowering them you yeah. know so we came up with the name baby and uh, and it just it just went perfectly because we want to build better kids build better people you know what I mean yes. so uh, that's where it all drive from yeah so that's called building a better you, and I thought that was so catchy. And you should see their logo is is, is quite catchy. And I and I, was, I saw this logo, and I said, "Holy cow! I got to be a part of whatever it is that they're doing because uh, it is much needed in our community and our society." So for baby, um, what do you hope to accomplish? You know, in terms of being integrated into the community culture celebration, this event that's coming up in October. What do you hope to accomplish uh, at that? That, that event for baby well I, I want to uh, get people more aware aware of reaching out to kids you know reach one teach one maybe not just your own kid but maybe somebody else's kid to say hey it's all right to say yes sir and yes ma'am yes. you know and just give them some encouragement so what we want to get out of the event is to intro what a little bit we're about you know uh, in our little skit you know we we're actually me and uh, my partner we're going to be doing some actual haircuts on the platform and we uh supposed to have some dancers to come in and dance and have the kids that we're uh cutting to yes. you know tell a little bit about them being a better me building a better you you know mm -hmm. and just keeping it real positive we want to put that impression on the community as a whole to keep awesome. in mind that you know we, ha we we got these youth that we can train them to be the good people yes you know we might got these confused grown-ups already yes you know what i mean but we have time to really implement an impression, some positive motivation yes. and empower these youth, you know, yes. so that's what we want to bring out uh, the culture awareness. Yeah, we don't want to take too much more time uh, and, and I just really wanted to, you know, I was talking to January before the set and I said, January, just give the people who you are and, and, and just showcase who you are. So one real quick question, like what, if you could change one thing in this world, uh, what would that be for our youth? Um, just to just to give them a, a, a great positive habit to follow. When I was young, we had the, uh, you either learn by wisdom or, or experience, and we were kind of like disciplined or learn the wisdom so mm -hmm. we won't have a bad experience. Mm -hmm. But I just want to be able to give them that choice, 
You know, in today's society, they've been followed by social media. It's taking up all they, you know, they, they brain teasing time. You know what I mean? Yes. So what we want to do is get the community back interacting with the kids and get them interactive with each other instead of just on a phone device. Yes. So that's Baby. Baby, I want you guys to look that up. That's Building a Better You. And this is an organization that is reaching out to the children. They have elected to be a part of this, this event coming up October 7th. That event is going to be from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And we're hoping that we can really connect these, these different cultures and these children can learn about different facilities and cultures and events that's happening in our history so that they can form their own opinions and their, their ideas in order to grow uh, this great city of Enid. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, John and Ray, for oh, being no on the set with us. And any, any, any parting words? Hey, let's do it. Hey, reach one, teach one. Reach baby. one, teach one. I like it. Thank you for tuning in to this set of uh, Community Talk. Welcome back to Community Talk. We're joined with Larry Peterson here. We're talking about baby right now. We want to stay on this topic of baby, but the reason why baby is here is because of the community cultural celebration that's coming up October 7th from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And we want you to be a part of that. And that's why we're here in the studio right now to talk about it. So Larry, tell me all about yourself. Man, who, where you come from? My name's Larry Peterson. I'm from Loudoun, Oklahoma. Um, Pretty much, I grew up in the hood, and you know, I've had my share of ups and downs, and so you know, I'm here now. Yeah. And uh, you know, trying to trying to make this place a better place, man. Uh, and um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's your position in Baby? Uh, I'm the vice president of Baby. Um, I don't know uh, how much y'all have already heard of Baby, but uh, Baby is building a better you. Um, friend of mine and I, you know, um, first of all, I guess I need to know, y'all need to know how I got to Enid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. But uh, I was cutting hair in Oklahoma City, and um, I used to do some free uh, haircuts down there at a little school. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine used to call me out, and. Uh, he would call me, he's like, hey, bro, man, I need you to come up here and help some of these kids out, man, and uh, cut their hair. Yeah. And um, he was like, how much you gonna charge me? And I was like, uh, nothing. What well, I'm gonna charge you for, bro? You know, we, we good people, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? He was like, all right, come on, holler at me. So I would go up there uh, to the school and I would cut some of the young, uh, young boys' hair. And it was actually a program that they had. And, um, the program was for at-risk kids that was at the school. Okay. And okay. Um, it ended up helping the kids to be better. Uh, they grades went up. They started feeling good about themselves. They started, uh, you know, actually being productive at, at the school. So mm -hmm. that's how I uh, came up with uh, the doing the back-to-school things and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, eventually, uh, like I said, I was in uh, Oklahoma City and friend of mine called me and was like, hey, you need to come down here and, you know, get with my cousin. Y'all kind of doing a lot of the same things. And um, okay. I said, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I don't know. But, you know, uh, I came to, I went on, I got on my knees, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked God, you know, I said, God, is this the way you really trying to take this to, you know? And I got my answer, so mm -hmm. here I am, man. You know, we, we're trying to take it to another level. Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of research and studying on, on what's called ACEs, and that, as, that's Adverse uh, Childhood Experiences, and this is what we're dealing with in our right, society, right, society right, today, right, in our right. culture today, is kids that's experiencing these different adverse effects that's happening in the home, right, and we're trying right. to solve that right here right, with Baby, right? right? right so right. so what are some of the things when we talk about uh, socialism and racism and things that's going on, what are we trying to teach our children today? Um, it's no color. Okay. It's no color. Okay. I mean, we all bleed the same. Okay. At the end of the day, you know, um, when when these kids when these kids is at daycare and they're playing with the toys and they're doing this and that, they fighting over the toy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? They're not fighting That's over. 
because you're a different color. They're fighting over that object. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's the, the thing that, you know, I want everybody to know, you know, is it's no, no color. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's our love. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that's, that's what we're supposed to be here to do is love each other and, you know, help one another. Mm -hmm. So we got some really good performances that's coming up for Baby uh, on October 7th. They have a spot. They're going to have a booth. Uh, set up at, at the on-site location, uh, and they're going to do some, some, some of the most amazing performances that I want you guys to be a part of, right? Because we want to see where our youth is heading and what, what direction right, right. They're, they're going in. So, Larry, can you, you know, in, in, in a little sum, sum up of words, what is it, what is one thing that you would say, the one message that you want to send to our children today in our communities, what, what would that message be to them? What would you change? When you look good, you do good. I came up with that motto, uh, like I say, when a kid is walking into the classroom and he's getting picked on, he feels bad about himself. Mm -hmm. But that same kid come in with a nice fresh haircut he might not even have fresh clothes, but he got a fresh haircut. Mm -hmm. And he can look himself in the mirror and look and know he is somebody. Mm -hmm. When he walk in that classroom, he's going to feel the same way. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that's baby. That's building a better you. And some of the things that they want to uh, go on a road with is uh, free haircuts. They got a, an yes, event sir. coming up. Yes, can you tell me a little bit about that event? Oh, man, we got a... Uh, August the 20th, uh, 20th at the uh, Southern Heights building. Uh, we will be doing free haircuts and braids. It's called Faze and Braids. Uh, we have uh, free hot dogs. We have uh, some mentoring going. We have a little DJ. Uh, you name it, it's out there. We out there to have fun, uh, fade some heads, and uh, cut some hair. And so, and that's the that's the total message that we want to get get across to our children: camaraderie in our community, uh, uniting as, as on a, on a united front, getting out there and exploring different cultures, right. different cultures that make a difference. Because I know we were talking about it in the shop one time that these kids didn't even know what kickball was yeah. because they was <laughs> because they was yeah. stuck behind social media, and we want to remove that and right. and get them active in the community. And so, thank you guys for tuning in to this edition of. Community Talk, uh, hosted by our great uh, partners at Any Television Network. Uh, my name is Demetrius Office, and this is Larry Peterson. And he's the vice president of Baby. And you've seen him from Johnny Ray, who is the director of, of Baby. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you on October 7th from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Take care. I'm Matt Lohman, CEO of Hope Outreach Ministries, where our mission statement is sharing the love of Jesus Christ to the felt needs of our community for the purpose of empowering people towards responsible living, where we have our parenting ministry, our homeless ministry, our community care ministry, our transitional housing ministry, and our thrift store ministry, which helps everyone in our community who is in need. Please look for us on Community Talk. We're looking forward to telling you more about each of those ministries. Welcome to this segment of Community Talk. I'm Bobby Donaldson, uh, and I had it shared with me in a store recently that I'm the old nursing home lady. <laughs> Someone came up to me in the store and they said, I know you, you're the old nursing home lady. And I stood there a minute and I thought, you know, yes I am. Uh, I started in the nursing home uh, as an employee in 1963. Um, I didn't want that job, I was not happy that I had it and uh, I did not know that it was going to make my life a beautiful, precious journey. Today here we're going to talk a little about um, the nursing homes and the other services that all of us are together with for the seniors and for people uh, who are on a journey, hopefully with healing. Um, I have with me today Christy Brown who is going to tell you a little about who she is. We're going to talk about home health and hospice and skilled nursing in the nursing home and kind of how that whole journey works. So let's 
Let's let Christy tell you about her. Well, I'm Christy Brown. I am the agency liaison for Ross Healthcare here in Enon. Uh, we provide hospice and home health throughout Oklahoma. Um, I've worked with Bobby many times, and she does love what she's doing, and she's very good at it. Uh, we provide hospice in the nursing homes, or we can also provide home health if there's a skilled patient that's going home. And that's kind of um, sometimes when a patient comes to us not for long-term care, but they're really there because they've, say, fallen and had a hip replacement. And skilled is the get better journey. Right. Our, our goal is that the different disciplines or therapies are going to work with them, whether it's speech or occupational or physical. They're going to work with them to recover to at least the level before the injury and maybe even beyond that. And that's a window of care. And it... It starts after the hospital procedure and whatever initiated this, and then it has a, um, a, a like a step ladder of care where we hopefully go up, and then at some point these people uh, go home, and when they go home they are, uh, God willing, much better than when we started this journey, but they're still they need that support and so we encourage our skilled people to speak with the home health agencies talk with their physicians talk with people about what can home health do uh, at now that you're home so tell me a little bit about if if one of my recovering skilled people was done with us and ready to go back into their own home say mm -hmm. you would come and talk to them and you and the physician and them kind of decide? Absolutely. Like you said before, the skilled is temporary. And you go into the long-term care facility and you're there for just a specific amount of time. And nine times out of ten when that patient leaves the nursing home, they're going to go back home and they need just some additional care, such as therapies, mm -hmm. um, the occupational therapist going into the home and making sure their home is safe for them to be there. So it doesn't end while they're in the nursing home, but it's a Medicare benefit, so there's only so long that you can stay there on skilled. So what we do is we work with the physician, we get an order, we go into the nursing home, the nursing homes work with us, and we place that patient back at home, and that level of care just continues for them so they'll be safe and independent. Well, and things like the nurse from home health can come if the doctor needs the vitals. One of the med I'm not medical, we've all met me and we know I'm not. <laughs> but sometimes some medicines you need your blood pressure or if you need your diabetes or your something. And they, your nurses and your people can come to someone's home mm -hmm. in the uh, awful heat and in the terrible cold are the biggest victories. But just not having to shuffle that recovering person into a car and then into a doctor's office and it is sometimes that hurts or impedes the process, I guess. Am I telling that? That's what correct. Um, usually what happens is they evaluate the patient to see what their needs are going to be mm -hmm. because everybody's different, of course. And sometimes they will require like some nursing, an aide to come in to assist with bathing or something like that. Um, or it might just be the therapies. But what we do, the nurse will go in and evaluate, and then she decides what level of care they're going to need. They meet with the doctor. The doctor decides, gives the order, and then we take it from there. Okay, and this is, for us, for skilled, is always Medicare. Correct. Um, let's talk a minute about the Advantage program. This is not my area of expertise. Yeah. So Christy's going to tell you, and I'm going to go like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you know, uh, Bobby works a lot with long-term care, and the Advantage program is actually a program to keep the patient independent at home. So in that in-between transition when the patient's at home but they're not quite ready for long-term care, Medicaid has a program where they can stay home and get assistance. It is a, an income-based program. They do have to qualify, but most of the time, if you qualify for long-term care, you're going to qualify for Advantage. Yes. It's the same basic uh, qualifications. What happens is they do simple things like aid work, like I told you earlier, where they can come in and assist with bathing or help with a little bit of cooking and cleaning, um, basic things like that. There is a hospice benefit on Advantage as well, but there's not a home health. A lot of people get confused with that. It's basically they don't get a skilled nurse in the mm -hmm. home on the Advantage. They just get an aid. Well, and the thing I like about the Advantage, although I worked in the nursing homes for over 50 years, if you can keep your family at home and that's your goal and you're able to put it together, I'll help you. You can mm -hmm. ask anybody. I'll always yes. help you. We are there for a, a specific need and we provide a service that we believe is valuable. Exactly. But for any family who thinks they can do it or want to try it, we'll help you any way we can. Absolutely. And I love that Advantage will let them get their groceries or 
uh, run their sweeper because the home health aid really is only supposed to take care of the physical person. Exactly. So this broadens that. And if, if say, the spouse or an adult child who works is trying to do, it's just enough support for them to make it for a while. Exactly. One of the things that I know about Advantage that I love is they have a respite program for the caregiver. Mm -hmm. For whatever person is taking care of them, I took a person respite uh, a few years ago that was so fun. The great-granddaughter was getting married in California, and the, the actual patient was not able to travel pretty much, but the spouse who did pretty much all the care really wanted to go. And it worked out that Advantage has some funds and a program that let that person come temporarily for a window mm -hmm. to the nursing home and be cared. and. Um, it was really a fun thing because while the person was in our nursing home, I knew this person personally very well, we bought a bunch of postcards and we put on on them all that we were in the nursing home and we said, having a great time, wish you were here, and we sent them to people. Oh, <laughs> and the wife calls us and she's like, everybody's calling me, wanting to know why Dick's in the nursing home. <laughs> so, um, but we knew they were going home. They weren't afraid or sad or any of that transition. Right. But. It, that was such a gift that she got to have that part of her life and still be the caregiver and not have to make that Absolutely. sharp decision. It's important to remember the caregiver at the same time because they're under a lot of pressure and as well, And advantage is, is set up totally support that caregiving process. Exactly. That's really what it does. You know? Exactly. Okay, and uh, then we're going to talk about hospice in the nursing home. Tell me what hospice is. Okay, hospice is when it's a palliative care. It's an end-of-life care. It's when a patient decides that they want to go for the quality of their life and not seek aggressive treatment. So in other words, not back and forth out of the hospital or the ER. They want to take what life they have left and have the best quality of life. And that's where we come in is to provide that. And I can tell you that in my career, we have had hospice for people in the nursing home when we've reached a place, um, we actually had hospice for one of my parents. And for us, it, it was nice. They were able to manage the pain very well and still allow her a lot of time with the family. But also, they had a person who worked with them who helped one of my siblings who was really struggling to just let this go where God was taking it. And they really, that was for us probably the greatest gift. We focus on all levels. Not only, not only do we focus on the patient, which is most important, but we focus on the family too, because that's important as well. Uh, we can provide spiritual support. We can provide uh, counseling and, and support with advanced directives, things that most people might not think about when that end of lifetime comes. And that, that is something that the families have always told us, is we, we don't know what we would have done if you weren't there. We didn't know what direction to take, and that's kind of what we step in and do for that family. Well, I don't know what we would have done, and my, my one uh, sibling who was struggling, um, I think it was funny because at first we weren't going to have hospice because we weren't going there and that wasn't, and then my mother actually made that decision and explained to her that we were going to do it. And then a few weeks in, when she came here to stay for that last few weeks, we knew we were closed. One day, her and one of my other siblings didn't see something, and she's like, I'm telling the hospice nurse on you no. when she gets here. <laughs> and I'm like, well, ha-ha, first you were our enemy, and then you were our friend, and now you're our weapon. Yes. <laughs> well, there's a lot of myths out there about hospice, and unfortunately, most of them are not true because hospice is such a special level of care and a lot of people are scared of the word and I don't blame them I was as well but once I learned more about it and what it can provide for that patient and what it can pro provide for the family it, I, I just fell for what I do it, it's a very important part of life well and all of these are information for for y'all that's why I came here today um, uh, this sweet girl is my friend and I've known her since she was a child I know several people who work in my industry or her industry and we're really all just here for a journey we decided to be on. Um, I promise we're not here for the money or the glory. <laughs> <laughs> or the health regulations, which are our favorite, you know. But Advantage is a great program if, if you have more questions about that, um, about hospice or home health, please always contact us and we will help you. Um, I just... I think it's so important to understand there are so many levels to the nursing home journey. And it's not just like, you know, we took you there and now we're done and this is over. So um, thank you. 
thank for you for coming today and thank you for your loving kindness for my family when we needed you to be thank you um but i know your mother so i know you're very kind oh thank you <laughs> i'm a little prejudiced <laughs> and for all of those who've ever trusted a loved one to us we'd like to thank you for that trust with Autry Technology Center, coordinator for business and industry services. If you're interested in a class, flip through our catalog and see if we have anything to offer. Otherwise, we can do customized training as well. Feel free to contact us at Autry Technology Center and ask for Ashley Gore. Watch for us on Community Talk.